Sent to young men from 13 to 18. I, I, get, I got a lot of straight A students. I got a lot of gangbangers, and I bring them all together. I mix them. You can't come to my camp because you're a straight-A student. I get that dude that, that ain't got nothing working because I can relate to that. So the reason I mix them is so that they can talk to one another and get an understanding of each one of them worlds. Because a little straight-A student, the little dude, mama drop him off at the carpool line and all like that, he don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I got to put them together so they can be some type of understanding developed between the two because it's easy to say don't do this and don't do that it's sort of crazy man like my mentoring campus from 13 to 18 okay. but usually when i get them they already in some right mm -hmm. now i save some mm -hmm. but a lot of cats are already in it right. I, I mean look i got mentoring camp. i got a 15 year old boy he come to the mentoring camp he want to come because he want to learn how to be a man <laughs> I said, well, you, you're 15, you, you, you learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I got two kids though, Mr. Harvey. Mm -hmm. Now he on the fast track. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, now I got the just a mentoring camp to him. Ain't no near to him doing shapes and colors, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he got two kids. Yeah. But kids see everything, yeah, especially don't. boys, man. Yes. Because yep. boys going to emulate some man yeah, um, somewhere. Yep, yeah, he going to emulate the good one or he going to oh, emulate damn. the bad one. But he going to emulate a man. That's why male role models are so critical mm -hmm. in a boy's life. Because yeah. they're going to they gonna be one or the other. Yes, you can bet your money on that. We not finna be nothing else except one or the other. other. I don't even need these cards. I don't have these cards. Because <laughs> this is my subject, man. Because, yeah. see, even though I'm famous, man, you know what matter to me most? I'm a black man. Right. That mattered to me more than anything. Yeah. The greatest day of my life was October 16th at the Million Man March. Oh. That was the greatest day yeah. of my life as a black man. Yeah. Louis Farrakhan mm. called a million men to Washington, D.C. I got there on that hill at 4.30 in the morning. I couldn't see nothing. It was pitch black. CNN was setting up. And we was kind of hoping, I said, man, maybe 200,000 brothers come, that'd be a nice showing for Minister Farrakhan and all this here. And you know, I just wanted to be a representative. I had just got this TV show called Me and the Boys of 1995, and the light started coming up over the hill at the Capitol. When I turned around, my boy said, man, look here. I turned around, you couldn't see the ground nowhere. <laughs> it was the largest gathering Yes. at the Washington Mall in the history. Mm. But the most telling moment for me was a police officer on horseback. He recognized me. He said, ain't you the fella from Showtime at Apollo? You know, I wasn't on Fairly Few, wasn't no books, wasn't all this, it wasn't none of that then. I had a TV show called Me and the Boys. He said, ain't you the fella from Showtime at Apollo? I said, yeah. He got down off his horse. He said, can I shake your hand? I said, yeah. He said, I want to apologize to y'all. I said, you want to apologize to who? To all these people out here. He said, we were set up for violence. He said, we got so many paddy wagons. He said, we got so many restraints. He said, we got so many dogs on the perimeter. He said, sir, we knew it was going to be riots and looting. Do you know that was not one incident that day? Because on that day, this man's vision to assemble a million men, over a million men was on that mall. It was over a million black men that day. Amen. I never saw so many black men crying nowhere in my life. I hugged so many black men I never knew. They were stepping on each other. Hey, my man, I'm sorry, brother. You be all right. I got love for you. Because they just wanted to be something that yeah. day. Now I'm saying all that to say this, that men got to step up. That was the whole purpose of it, to get us a step up and be who we was created to be. So we as men have got to pick up and do our share. Yes. This is a call for mentors, not in the Stephen Marjorie Harvey Foundation, in the 100 black men, in the Bro Big Brothers and Little Sisters organization. Go get you some young boy on your street, yes. you see walking down the street and say, come here young man, let me holler at you. Boy, you look like you're going to be something. What's on your mind? Pull your pants up. Let me talk to you. Right. Exactly. I stopped a little boy in the airport one time, Atlanta airport, about, about, about six years, seven years ago. 
I was coming from Africa. Got a kid came up to me, had hair plaited and opened everything. He said, hey, oh man, Mr. Harvey, I'm a big fan of yours. Can I talk to you? I said, yeah, man, pull your pants up so I can talk to you. Because he was sagging. He pulled his pants, so I said, tuck your shirt in, man, so we can talk. He just tucking his shirt in. He didn't give a damn. He was just listening to me. Because he wanted to have this conversation. Now that you want to have a conversation with Steve Harvey, pull your pants up, man, tuck your shirt in. Now what you want to talk about? Tighten your belt up. He said, Mr. Harvey, I just want to ask you a question, man. It's this girl that work over there in customs, and I've been trying to talk to her, and she won't give me the time of day. I said, if you hadn't pulled your pants up and tuck your shirt in, I wasn't even gonna give you the time of day. He said, Mr. Harvey, you think that's what it is? I said, I know that's what it is. And so we talked a little bit. He was sharp, little rough little dude. He's about 16, 17, but he struck me, man, because he wanted something. Then he said, Mr. Hart, I said, what you plan on with your life? I don't know. I said, you ever thought about going to school? I would, so I said, I tell you what, man, come to my mentoring camp. So I had him come to my mentoring camp that summer. Today, this kid has graduated from Georgia State. Today, this little kid that started a food company, he got a degree, but he started a food company. He sent me a receipt the other day. Do you know this boy making $300,000 a year? <laughs> uh, look, we've been talking about a lot, but I, I, first of all, I appreciate this father and son for sharing because It take a lot of courage to come on here, man. But then it take a lot of love to come on here, too. Yeah. Yeah. He love you, man. Oh, yeah, I know. That's my guy. <laughs> yeah. But guess what, though? You got some people you got to pass that love on to. Right. Right. First things first. First, you got to disconnect. Yeah. Don't worry about See, the other slang in the hood is keep it real. Yeah. I try to teach the kids in my mentor. It ain't your job to keep, keep it, it real. It's your job to keep it moving. That's right. You've That's got right. to constantly be moving upward. You've got to try to progress. Yeah. Get your kids and get out. Yes. So you can give them. See, your, your other two brothers, they out because your father yeah. got them out. Yes. You got to get, you got to disconnect. I'm sorry. Look, I'm not speaking against the hood. That's right. Please don't get me wrong. But if you're in a neighborhood that ain't giving you a fair shot, you got to change neighborhoods. That's right. Amen. I'm sorry. Amen. You Amen. just got to change neighborhoods. Yes. Let's think about mentoring. Let's think about cleaning up our neighborhoods. And let's do it for the elderly, and let's do it for our babies. Because we owe our elders the respect. Yeah, sure. They went through the civil rights for us yes. and all this other stuff. We ought to be able to let them live glorious lives and pay them back for all they've done for us. And then our babies need a chance. Yeah, that's right.